What's up, what's up everybody? Welcome to the 180 show. Today we got a show for you. We have decided to get a little diverse and we want your opinion. So I went, I partnered up with some friends, brought them in, and now today we're going to talk about it. What would you do if your child got out of line, talked to you crazy? You're going to put them in the corner, tell them it's time out time, or you're going to get the belt. Beat them across the behind. Listen, y'all tune in. I got a few people give me their aspect of it. So sit back, get a snack, and let's have a good show. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing today? Good, good. What's going on? Okay, we're going to start with ladies first. Introduce yourself. Let me know who you are. You know, let the people know who you are. What's your name? I'm Vanessa Renee. Vanessa Renee? Tamika. Tamika? Michael. Michael? Blake. Blake. Okay, so I brought you guys here today. Um, first off, I'm going to go around and ask how many kids each person has. Um, I want you guys to give me your opinion of disciplinary action that you feel that you should give your kids. What do you, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of the law. I'm going to let you know what mm -hmm. the law feels that you should do with your children. And then we're, we're just going to go from there. Is that okay? Y'all just okay. relax. Everybody relax. It's okay. We're going to have a good time, all right? All right, Miss Vanessa, how many kids do you have? I have three children. Three children. How many kids do you have, Mr. Mike? One child. I have six. Six. Oof. Yeah. Um. Three biological and one uh, step. So you got four kids. Mm -hmm. We're going to say four. four. Okay, so we got four. Boom. We got all the way to six. From one all the way to six. All right, so, Miss Anessa, we're going to start with you, and then I'm going to shoot to you, Mr. Blake. So be ready, all right? Miss Anessa, so I'm going to use, for example, first off, what is your feeling on disciplinary, disciplining children? Um, I grew up, and I, you know, I was disciplined by my grandma and my mama. So okay. I'm strict with my children. Um, I don't like to physically spank my children. So no belts. No belts. No belts. Okay, so let's go. We're gonna we're gonna put a pause in. Okay, so I don't want to. I'm, I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth. Keep up with me now, to make Okay, <laughs> keep up with me. The lash is gonna have to keep up with me, girl. So listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna move it over to Blake, Mr. Blake. Give me your de definition of discipline. My definition of discipline. Um, that would mean I would say correcting a child for something that they did that was inappropriate in your eyes. Okay, okay. Yeah. I can, that's I like a good, it. Do I you like agree it. with that definition? Yes. Do we, yeah, do we, okay, so when we do corrective learning, corrective thinking, correcting of a child, she says no belts. Do you feel no belts? No belt. I believe in a belt. You believe in a belt? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Mr. Mike, jump in there. What I believe it's a, it's, a, um, it's a blend. It just depends on the child. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. like, um, I think what they say, the, 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 the saying is the punishment to fit the crime. Yeah, I think it's like whatever the child does, if it's like, if it's warranted of a belt, then you go there right. So you will whip your kids? Oh, indeed. indeed. Oh, indeed. I'm okay. In with You're in, you don't want one. Okay, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Blake. I would. You would? So we take But wait, the, wait, okay. don't let me let me correct. I have used a belt. Okay. But I prefer and ninety nine point nine percent of the time I'm not gonna use a belt. So so ninety oh ninety man, my mama. <laughs> okay, so wait, wait. So for you to come from a disciplinarian home, so when you say you came from a disciplinarian home and they disciplined you guys well. Are we talking about just talking, switches? Switches and, and belts, yeah. yeah. And I grew up in that era, but I think that each era, we're in a different time zone, in a different era where you can't always result to putting using a belt. I think back then it fit for us as grown, growing up, you know. But, but don't that, you feel like the kids are worse now than they were back then? I will agree with that part. I will agree with that part, but I feel like they are on, they have too many, too many avenues. So you, I take things. If I bought it and you acting up, you don't deserve it. So I'm one cell phones, stuff like that. Okay, so I need to piggyback off that. I'm going to bring it over here. 
four kids and six kids. Cause I, I, this is a man's point of view. Nothing against y'all. I promise nothing against you. Know, we, we love women, so we, we ain't got nothing against y'all. Y'all strong black women. But from a man's point of view, because I'm, I think I'm the youngest one here. Um, and she said something that really triggered something with me. Okay. She said, I bought it, I'm taking it. And as a kid, when I was younger, because I think I'm the closest one that was a kid earliest, mm -hmm. they used to piss me off. That would anger me to the fullest because as a parent, I feel if you bought something as a gift, uh -oh. you shouldn't be able to say, hey, I'm taking it because you made me upset. But then you tell me don't throw a temper tantrum because I'm not getting my way. I just got off the phone with my boy Archie who said he got the master plan, dog. If you're thinking of using the Women Crush Wednesday or Man Crush Monday feature on 180 Life, you better get on it right now before the train leaves the station because it's the best feature you've ever seen. You get so much exposure with 180 Life, you better tap in with my guy Archie and 180 Life right now. So what do, you, what do you guys feel about the, I bought the phone, I'm taking it, this is my discipline action? Well, your response is what makes it effective. Think about it. Look at how you reacted to it, so it must work. Mm. Mm. You got to agree with that. But okay. here's my thing. I think where we are as uh, parents now, because we, we, we were all kids, yeah. but I got my Genesis taken on Christmas, but I was able to think about it and say, okay, that, that affected me. But you take uh, Xbox from a kid now, that don't mean it's going to affect them. You may have to go above that measure. So I'm not a, for, like, you know, whooping ex extremely. But I'm like, you know, if it gets to that point, you got to do what you got to do to get. It's like it's like a backwards control. You got to have control of your kid. It's true. You know, you got to have control of your kid. So you don't want your kid to be out of line, and you definitely don't want to – to, to have a situation where your kid is out there in the streets disrespecting other people. So that's, that's it's true. all about respect. Okay, with whooping your kids, and, I, and this is for you too, Tamika, what's the earliest age that this whooping, spanking situation comes into effect? Tamika, we'll start with Tamika, because she giving that look. I say as soon as your child start crawling and touching things, they ain't got no business touching. You got to do that pop-pop. So I think it generally starts with the hand. Then as they get older, gradually, it's going to be the butt. And then you're going to bring that, that belt. <laughs> and then, like, in my situation with my growing up, I always had either belt, um, switch, or they take things. You're grounded. Go to your room. No outside. You can't do this. You can't talk on the phone. No company. That was my punishment. My parents did that as well. Was so there was, like, stages to it. Let me take it a step further. I grew up in a household where the dad, the male, couldn't put his hands on us as young ladies. So it, it's, it stretches, like the discipline, it's hard as a parent because there's no instructions to it. So discipline, when you spanking your kid, like I grew up in that era too, like where the daddy couldn't, because my grandma would say he too heavy handed. So then she would result in the belt and the switch. And that's, wow. that just took me to a whole nother level for me and my kids. So. Did you grow up in that era as well, Mr. Blake? I did. Um, and I would say like my grandfather had a really effective method. I called it the... the the temperature method okay. because he would let you go a long time yeah. but when he finally came it was literally like mm -hmm. the undertaker was knocking on the door <laughs> wow. because when he came with that switch and you saw it it was over you, and you knew it so because you guys came up in the switch era yeah uh, green I've never, switch green meat mm -hmm. switch yeah, yeah. The, was you in the switch switch uh, my parents have never <laughs> That hit me with a tree. I think that is very <laughs> a, a switch that a tree. <laughs> 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 my parents never. I wasn't in the switch. Well, they were doing that in our neighborhood. By the time my I was raised in the suburbs, you know, my parents did with me. I'm not gonna say my parents. My parents beat the and you know my parents beat the hell out of me. I was I was a bad little little something in the neighborhood, and I could terrorize some stuff. But, you know, I do believe in disciplining children now with switches and cords and... Wooden spoons, don't forget about it. it used to be fly water. Water. Man. I, I, I've gotten hit with a fly swatter. I've, I've gotten hit with a fly swatter. I've gotten hit with a fly swatter. I remember, I, but see, I was one of the kids that got big probably mm, 
I got taller than my mom at like 13 or 14. Oh, wow. So my mom, my mom wasn't a single mom, but my mom was very effective. My mom had a chokehold that will not wait. But my mom was not abusive. I came out very, very well. Mr. 180 is good. But um, just make sure anybody, you know, you can go after I do have a good legal team. You're not going to go after my mother. Um, my mom was a great mom. But now as a parent and an adult, I kind of look at it different. I kind of um, I kind of feel your approach, but I'm kind of sold on y'all's approach. My thing is with the punishment thing for me. And this is me. I, I don't believe me being on punishments as much as I was, it's effective. In different scenarios, like for me, when school, mm -hmm. if I made this grade or that grade or younger, I would fail on purpose just because I'm like, okay, you punishing me for what? I'm trying to prove a point to you. My grades ain't going to get no better, so you just put me on punishment <laughs> for what? So I used to be rebellious with oh, things wow. like that. But like all you doing is taking my TV, my radio. I like to read, so I'm like, you're not taking my mind. I'm still stimulating it. I still go to school and hang out. You just, I can't go outside. Okay, I've been outside all day at school. But you know, um, I would think that you trying to punish me because I'm not learning right at school or I'm failing, and you're punishing me for that. So that's what I'm gonna do it on purpose now. Okay. Cause I'm gonna show you that you doing it to me is not working. Mm. I think the psychological aspect, my mother was affected with that because, and I don't think, I think we've lost that because I'll never forget again, school, um, eighth grade, I'll never forget. The whole year, me and a friend of mine just blew the eighth grade, just blew it. Let's just call it that. And so back then, they would mail your report cards to the house. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, I went to the mailbox, she sent me to the mailbox to go get the mail, and I, I was walking back and I held up those those report cards into the sun and I could see nothing but red. I was like, it's over. So I get home and she was on the phone, as a matter of fact, talking to Anessa's mother. I'll never forget. <laughs> okay. And so um, she was like, uh, she was like, let me call you right back. I got something I got to take care of. And immediately, just by her saying that, it was effective. Like, th they didn't have to say a lot. It was like, it, they didn't have to say a lot. And so, I remember the words she she told me when she found out about my grades. She was like, you don't understand. I dress you well. Yeah. I do everything for you. Yeah. I give you everything. And then you disappointed me and you make me look like a fool in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. When you hear things like that, it messes with you emotionally. And I just don't think that we have the power as parents today to use those. It's almost like using the force. You know, like a Jedi. It's like my mom could say some things that just got in your head, and you was like, "Man, I really disappointed her," and that doesn't work today. I don't think. Right, it doesn't. Well, I mean, to piggyback, piggyback off of what Blake said, my grandmother could give me a look. Like I remember being you in the youth choir stand, and I would be acting up or doing something. Like we couldn't have gum, we couldn't have no yeah, candy or nothing. Those. And I remember I was up there just chewing, and my grandmother gave me this look, and I was like. Mm. And so it's an emotional connection that you we used to have back in the day. But like I said, it's a different era now. Mm -hmm. And I think we're so busy and like so many hats. And, you know, you're trying to, to, to be the best parent that you can be. And for me, it just don't come natural to, to pop my kid and, you know, to put physical force on them and stuff. It just don't come natural to me. I want to love, love and nurture my children, but I'm also pushing the air, you know, where they got to get it right in this house because when you leave my my door, there's a world w awaiting you. So if you can't get it right in here, I may need to give you some physical force because then I don't want the phone call from the detective or the sheriff or the police or, you know, whatever. I want to try to get it right, but... How do you really get it right? Do you physically keep giving your kid? Because like I'm saying, my grandmother had that force where she go. And just the disappointment of her look and stuff made me say, I'm going to get it right. Oh, wow. But I think it's also the village treatment. Mm -hmm. You got to think about it. Yeah. You said it perfectly. Grandma could get that look, whatever, whatever. But think about it like this. If your grandma didn't get to you, then you have to worry about the aunties and you have to worry about the mamas. Right. And you have to worry. It, was so, it was other people that came behind that. And that's crazy that you say that because the village, it, the, the, it's true, it takes a village to raise them, but the village, where's the village at these days? Exactly. Because now, 
I refuse to let a neighbor even, if you have a problem, I, I tell my neighbors, if you have a problem with mine, come holler at me. Exactly. There's no reason for you to touch him, talk to him, whatever the situation is. And it's crazy that you said what you said because my daddy used to tell me that I'm whooping you now because I'm whooping you with love. And I don't want you to get out there because they're going to beat you and try to kill you. And if they get the beating on you, they don't care what they hit, right. what they do. they just trying to, you know, and now these days, these kids are so defiant. Yeah. Right. I ain't going to lie. They just play rude. But that goes, like, to me, that goes back to the point of you taking the disciplinary, the disciplinary actions out of the home. Yeah. And you want us to send them to you and talk to you crazy because you let us stay at home with them talking to us crazy because we can't whoop them. Or we can't do whatever we need wow. to do. Now, there's some people take it too far with the slaps and the body slams and you know, the electricity cord, <laughs> the lamps, whatever, <laughs> the shoes. <laughs> oh, Lord. And I see some physical action where people are actually punching their children, yanking their children, all that type of jazz. But once you told me I couldn't discipline my child at home mm. because she could call 911 on me, she y'all could call child welfare on me because I'm whooping her. But she at school talking to you crazy, and you calling me. What you want me to do? You, y'all told me I couldn't whoop her. So what do you want me to do, ma'am? Mm -hmm. When I'm at home, that's my job. When she's with you, that's your job. You figure it out. Mm -hmm. Send it to the principal office, put it in the ISS, do whatever you got to do. But you took my disciplinary hand from me because of whatever y'all felt other people were overdoing in their homes. But those need to, I think that the, I feel like those should have been handled individually. You. Take that up with that parent. You call and you talk to CPS with that parent. Why are you taking everybody's disciplinary hand from them? So now you got these children out here that don't say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, don't hold doors. They say don't yeah. Don't clean up. They don't even have chores no more. Oh, yeah, they're not even welcome to life. See, oh, no. and oh, I, was, I was just out the other day with some, some young kids, and I was like, hey, would you guys, you know, I was helping out a friend. I was like, hey, what kind of ice cream do you want? Do you guys like that? And the, the little girl said, yeah. I said, yes. Yeah. I said, yes, yeah, and we went, I promise, we went back and forth for about three minutes with the yeah and the yeah, because they don't say yes, ma'am, but do you feel like the reason this has come, because now you've got a lot of 13-year-olds and 16-year-olds having kids, nothing against teenage pregnancy, if that's the situation, you know, yeah. but, you know, back in my day, I can speak in the 90s, our parents wanted us to be kids as long as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, and I see when I see little girls that look like grown women and you have to question how old this person is. And I see little boys. I, I met a little boy. He actually lives in our neighborhood. He, well, he lives around the corner, mm -hmm. but he walks through my neighborhood at 10 o'clock at night. Oh, wow. And I want to say he's 13. He's 12 or 13. And it's 10 and he's walking home. And I was I'm, a whooping. That was, was that was a that yeah, was a fly yeah. swatter. Girl. But yeah. sometimes the parents aren't even having street lights. <laughs> we grew up with the street lights. Yeah. Light. You better be in before the so street lights come on. When it comes to the parents are home, like there there are some women that I have met that legitimately have their single mothers. Mm -hmm. They have two or three jobs. Hey, I can't be home when you're home. You want food and a and roof. Sleep, you get what I'm saying. So I can understand that. But then there are some parents that are. They're just not there. Like they're hanging out with their friends, but then it comes to the point of they're growing up with their kids. Mm -hmm. Right. That's true. Yeah. But we grew up in the era where I'm not your friend, I'm your mom. I'm your dad. I, I grew up with that too. Yeah. And I told I my mom, well, you don't need to add me on Facebook then. But we're not my friends. daughter, with me and my daughter, she grew up with me. Okay. I had her at 21, but we grew up together. If I went somewhere, she was with me. If there I'm going here and there, she with me. <laughs> so that's just point blank on that. But she also had. Um, issues not be uh, uh, it's, they call it a behavioral issue so they didn't do her for ADHD they didn't do her for these things but she has a behavioral issue which also us as parents we don't understand what's going on with our child at this journey you're like well where did this come from so we got other people telling us there's something wrong with your child your child acts like this because of this so then you're like dang well I don't want to whoop them because they got this well, how do you discipline a child that might have a mental health issue or some type of behavioral issue? You or know, even that's, like, in my that's situation, hard. Yeah. It's hard. It, my kids have their blood disorders, and they, you know, 
I cringe because I'm like, oh, if I put my hands on them, are they going to go into a crisis? Or if I put pop their butt, are they going to go into crisis? It's so much. It's a different dynamic from back in the day. So, again, this is a very important topic. Yeah. Because, man. So, it's, it's, right. it's yeah, difficult. Right. <clears throat> I got, a, I got a, a serious question because this is one thing that I deal with. Um, and this is from a, a more man's point of view. So, do you have sons, daughters? I have a son, yes. I have, have two sons. Two sons. Uh, both. You got sons and daughters. How many sons you got? I got four sons, two daughters. Four sons. No, no, no. Three and three. Three and three. three, and three. See, I'll be you shitting where I'm at. Yeah. Jesus, oh Lord. <laughs> three and three. Oh, three and three. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so about my baby. <laughs> so, do you believe that whooping your kid is more effective with a boy than a girl? I would say with a boy, yes, and and I have to answer that because my wife, you know. Um, I didn't raise my, my my stepdaughter I was telling you about. Mm. And so my wife has said that when she was young that she just had to come in the room like she was approaching her to spank her. And she would literally cringe and like, just like it had already happened. And that's all she had to do. Mm. And so I think with girls and boys there is a difference. But however, my youngest son, I don't, I mean, you st I started off spanking him. But after a certain amount of time, it had the same effect that, that I used the same effect that my grandfather used on me. It was just a matter of look, are we getting to that level? And he would just kind of ease it on back down, like you know, yeah, I don't want to go there right now. I, I'm not doing that with my dad because I know, like she said, that brother is heavy-handed. You know, right. it's just the fact of the fear of knowing what could come. So, with that being said, with your daughters, and this, this is controversial and you know this is everybody has their own opinion that's what I love about the 180 show everybody has their own opinion it's no we don't abuse our kids let's put that disclosure out there we do not abuse our kids we just <laughs> are sitting here talking I just want to put that disclosure for anybody that has an issue there's let everybody has their own opinion we're just here to talk about it and put it out there so everybody can talk about it so <clears throat> excuse me 180 life presents the elite talent show Performances you know, by Bree Wade, Jump Whale, Plain Jane, and you know DJ Blake for real. It's going to be on the ones and twos. We got vendors going to be in the building. Hope to see you there. Get your tickets now. Next time on the 180 Show. You know, he's a successful person. He's a successful. We, we got to change the narrative for us. And until we can have these uncomfortable forms, and bring it told all the time about how it's going to happen. You just got to trust your method. And you got to know that you did everything that you were able to do. And it might not, she might not, he or she might not come at 18 and say, Mom, you know what, you were right. Thank you spanked. If you took, you took. But you got to trust your method at the end of the day. Wow. And that's it. That's the narrative. That's it. Trust your method. Trust I like that. Method. Trust your method.